Hello and welcome to Illumination Podcast with Nick and Kizma. I'm Kizma and today's episode is The Anger Games Part 1. Hello and welcome to Illumination Podcast with Nick and Kizma, bringing you ancient wisdom for modern day success so that you can have the mindset to get your life and business set. As always, thank you for tuning in. And if you're new to the podcast, take a quick second to hit the subscribe button in iTunes, SoundCloud, or Stitcher. Uh, If you want to get the inside info for this and every episode, as well as some free gifts, go to illuminationacademy.net forward slash podcasts. And now let's dive in to get your mindset for your life and business set. Well, hey there, Nick. Hey there, Kizma. What's going on over there, angry bunny you? (laughs) Angry bunny. Uh... Are you an angry bunny? Uh, No, not anymore. Um, Mm -hmm. Oh, you used to be an angry bunny. Is that why? Let's just give a little overview of why the anger games, because it's a pretty cool thing we're going to be talking about this week and next week. Why the anger games? Well, there's a lot of reasons for this. What are they? One of them is that the world these days is having a massive need to be right. Mm -hmm. And people are really angry with one another. And I felt like it was important to talk about anger in a different way Mm -hmm. and to talk about the games that we play with anger, Yeah, right? How we use it and abuse it and how it uses us Um, and some of the lies that are that are told to us. Right. You know, and the, how unhealthy it can be. And at times when it is healthy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and that's, I'm excited to talk about this on the podcast because the, the blog posts that I wrote on this were pretty concise. Yeah. Obviously just part of a much bigger conversation, but here we get to talk about it a little mm-hmm. bit. And mm-hmm. that's, that's exciting to me because I just think this is a very, very important topic. It's, it's something a lot of times when I hear people talk about it, like, they they don't take a very holistic perspective to this uh and it just becomes about like using your anger and having it pr- propel you and drive you and and mm-hmm. just really some pretty unhealthy ideas about what mm-hmm. anger is and and understanding mm-hmm. how it functions in our mm-hmm. lives and things like that and and this is meant to shed a little bit of light on that yeah. and help to give a more broad perspective. Right. So, I know you say or you you start this out, it's a really cool teaching that anger is a device people use to control a situation, get others to pay attention or justify harmful thoughts and actions. Yep. That's that is very succinct. Can you talk a little bit about about each of these? Anger is a device. So, it is it it is something that people use when, when, if you want to take control of a situation and you get loud and angry, everybody's going to start paying attention to you. And they're going to be, they're going to be, they're either going to fight against you, which is just another way of you kind of controlling the mm-hmm. situation, right? Controlling other people's actions and behavior. Oh, and they're going to pay attention to you mm-hmm. because you're loud and in their face mm-hmm. and it's anger. And that's a, kind of an unsafe thing to be around. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's something when people are feeling unsafe or they're feeling like frustrated and that, you know, nobody's listening to me and those things, th- that's when they start to use anger to break a pattern and make a change in their lives. Right. Right. And, yeah. And, and they use it to justify for harmful thoughts and actions. Well, I did that because I was angry. Mm, right? and, got it. And I was angry because of this specific thing. Got it. Okay. So people use it in order to make change in their life. Mm -hmm. And that works. (laughs) I guess the question is, how long does it work for? (laughs) It works for a minute. And what's the aftermath like? Well, I think that's the more important part of it, right? Uh It works for a minute, but at what cost? Yeah. Right. What, what, what are the costs that go into that? What did you break Mm -hmm. along the way? Now, you know, I, you asked me about that, like, am I an angry bunny? Like, I don't know, as a young guy, I definitely had Mm -hmm. anger about stuff. You know, Um, when I was really frustrated with my career as a musician, like that anger came out in some 
pretty destructive ways, you know, it's harmed relationships. Like I got hauled into the union, you know, <laughs> some, some things that I said and just, just really just operating out of frustration and anger. Mm-hmm. And I just didn't know a better way of how to deal with those things and get my life on track in a positive way. So is it that per the way that you're teaching this, because you didn't have the strength, because you were weak, or in any situation when anger really rises, it's a sign of weakness. Anger is a sign of weakness. Mm-hmm. That, and that's one of the biggest misunderstandings because it seems like strength. Oh, that person, they're angry, you mm-hmm. know, like, and it projects strength, but it's actually a sign of weakness. That's so interesting. Because it needs to project that in order to feel strength, right? Got that it. is not true strength. Yeah, that's so good. And then talk a little bit about what happens at the cellular level. Well, that's a whole other thing. Mm-hmm. and They've measured this actually with how, like what toxic emotions like this, anger in particular is really toxic. And like as a quality, it's got that like, um, it's hard to describe, like a, like a sharp, a sharp and aggressive quality to mm-hmm. it, you know, the, the actual energy of it. Okay, well, okay, so you put that inside your body and in your mm-hmm. cells, right? Mm-hmm. And that's what it, it does on the outside, what it does on the inside. So mm-hmm. outside of you breaks things, right? right? It breaks patterns uh, and it breaks up energy, but not always in a good way. It, it's a, it's a destructive energy. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, it's getting out because it's already inside of you. And so that's what it's actually doing to your cells. And they have mm-hmm. done studies on this and, and how it increases the acidity in your body. Right. And that acidity breaks down, break, it literally breaks down your body on a cellular level. So anger when not resolved breaks things. It, yeah. In pretty much every layer of our being. Yeah, but not, not in a concise and discriminant way because mm-hmm. things need to break. Like destruction is one of the, you know, one of the fundamental mm-hmm. uh, forces in the universe. Uh, and that's okay. Think, like things need to be destroyed in order for new things to create. Mm-hmm. But the nature doesn't necessarily do that mm-hmm. indiscriminately. It does it on very large scales, right? Might, There's a cause and effect. It, yeah. And it Always. might seem indiscriminate mm-hmm. to us, but not. that is not how nature operates. Mm-hmm. But when we try to harness that in our lives, it winds up being indiscriminate. Yeah. And so you end it. up breaking things And probably all of us has, have experienced harming a relationship in a very deep way in a moment of anger. I think that's true. You know, you can't take that back. And it's you, really rough to take back. You know, and you can apologize for it. And that that is certainly appropriate and it can go a long ways. But man, like it it, sh- it shakes mm-hmm. and breaks something at a, at a fundamental level mm-hmm. uh, when that happens. And and that's a very hard thing to repair. Yeah. So what comes next? What, what do we do about all this? Well, first and foremost, I think a really important thing to understand is that what anger is. Mm-hmm. Desire obstructed. It is. It's our desires obstructed. That's we want something, something gets in the way and we're mad. That's right. Yeah. So basic. So it doesn't always, sometimes it happens that fast. Yeah. Right. I want to drive safely down the road and somebody (laughs) veers into my lane. Right. Okay. And and I'm mad because they're threat, you know, they're threatening Mm -hmm. you get angry at that person. Right. You don't realize in the moment just how impotent that anger is. Like mm-hmm. it's entirely useless. It is useless, isn't it? it? Completely. Yeah. So desire obstructed. And that's not to oversimplify it, but it really doesn't need to be more complicated than that. It will usually go through the phase of frustration. Frustration is the place that most people check out and don't pay attention mm. because it's not loud enough. You know, you so just, that comes before anger. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, we, oftentimes when it mm-hmm. builds over time, sometimes it just mm-hmm. explodes. Right. But that's usually a result of mm-hmm. when all those things have kind of built up and pent up inside and people get frustrated in their lives. Like you look at the pandemic and and before this, this was way before the, mm-hmm. any of this was happening is, you know, there's these political, you know, political um uh anger, mm-hmm. you know, one side towards the other side and all this like mm-hmm. shaming and anger towards other people because they don't think like you think and they're wrong and bad and all this other stuff. 
that gets pent up over time. And then it just comes out in explosive ways. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you'll see this in your personal relationships. All of a sudden you're having an argument about, and you're like, well, what are we even arguing about? Well, you're arguing because you're angry about these other things that have nothing to do with that. And this is just happens to be the person who's nearest to you when it's all bubbling up. And often that happens because they're the person that you feel safe expressing yourself with. Exactly. You know, so um, you don't deal with it. You don't deal with it at the frustration level yeah. where it's like that pressure building Don't inside. Solve it. Like, well, what do I, how do we deal with it at that level? Well, I think that it's really important to be asking, what am I really wanting to have happen here? To get clear. To get clear. Yeah. Well, what, what are these desires that are not being fulfilled in me? Mm-hmm. Where am I feeling obstructed and blocked in my life? Not moving forward. What am I, what am I truly frustrated about yeah. here? And usually it's about the outside. Okay. Something's not happening in and or, or around me in my life. My life isn't moving a certain way, mm-hmm. something like that. Then the anger and the frustration is about that thing. I see. But it's not being made about well, what's not being fulfilled inside. Mm-hmm. And that's... That's what gets neglected. That's the big lie. Okay. That's the lie mm-hmm. of lies because then we're... So the lie of lies is I'm angry because of some external thing. But the truth is I'm angry because of something not being fulfilled inside. Right. Mm-hmm. That's exactly right. The void. It's the void. back to the void. It is back okay. to the void. And, and that's that's really important because if you don't check it right there, you're going to be looking in the wrong place to solve that problem. Yeah. The anger is going to be projected on the people around you and on the world. Mm-hmm. And you're going to be trying to make changes outside of you in order to feel a certain way inside of yourself. Mm -hmm. And that will never last. Yeah. It'll maybe work for a minute. Yeah. But you'll break a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. Well, this is really kind of a cool way to look at at anger because when we understand it as an energy and we understand where it's coming from, It actually puts some things in perspective. It does. Yeah. And I think it helps us to get a handle on it in Mm -hmm. a different way. And that's important. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's important to be able to talk about it too. A lot of, of, like people don't necessarily talk about their anger until they're really angry. Mm -hmm. So moving on before, because I know we're going to talk more about this next week as well. What happens when one doesn't, like what's that winding into a destructive emotion do? Well, we often don't have really grounded conversations about the things that are frustrating to us Mm -hmm. and the things that we're angry about, Mm -hmm. right? It has to kind of blow up in order to get to that point. And what happens along the way is that we're not prone to take a real sense of responsibility Mm -hmm. for that. And so what we do is we justify the anger justify it. So you build a case Mm -hmm. in your head Mm -hmm. about why you're angry. It's because of this thing and that thing and that thing, right? It's because of this person did that thing or didn't do that thing. Mm -hmm. And now I'm angry, right? Or this situation is developed in a way that I just, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. And now I'm angry about it, you know, or of course, that can be turned in on yourself too, right? Which is also it's really destructive. Yeah, it's like a double whammy, right? Because mm-hmm. not only is the anger inside of you, but it's you know it's slinging back around to attack your own body and your own being. And so then, when we entrench ourselves in that that whole perspective of what's going on, then we're blind to any solutions that would be far more productive. I mean, think about it. Mm-hmm. When you're too busy building your case for why you ought to be angry. Yeah. Are are you really thinking about you're not in solution, you're in problem. You're you're just winding into the problem and just right. fanning that flame. Right. You know? Got so it. it gets really intense. But that's what that's what people are doing. You know, they mm-hmm. call it righteous anger. And and I'm not saying that that doesn't exist. But there are there are times we're going to be angry. Of course. It's an emotion. Yeah, yeah, we're human mm-hmm. beings, you know. Mm-hmm. And and it's because if you go back to that that other thing that we were talking about, where it projects strength, mm-hmm. right? And so the times that we feel most weak and vulnerable are times when anger can come out because it it project it right, projects right. that right. You feel, you know, if your kids are threatened, you're freaking angry, yeah, you know, and you're going to show that 
to get that, to right, get right. the situation to change, you know? Right. But what happens though is, is, is that gets people wind into that and they justify and then they go mm -hmm. back and play it around. And, well, yeah, of course I was supposed to be angry and blah, blah, blah. blah. And then it builds, right? It's an energy, it right. attracts, it's a vibration. So the next thing surrounded by angry, but angry things, angry people, and then you become what? Dependent on it to make change in your life. Well, yeah. And that's something I talk, uh, we'll talk more about this, I think, because mm -hmm. it, it can be effective for creating change. I like David Hawkins chart, right? Yeah. From power versus force. It's like anger is an important emotion to break through something. It can be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, it's really uh, charged. Mm -hmm. you know, it's a really powerful emotion. Uh, so it can be used in that way. Um, and, but done that, like indiscriminately, then all of a sudden that's, it's that's, exhausting. That's how you make change. Right? And it's how you're living. Oh, because that mm -hmm. worked. Right. So if right. it works, okay, well, I'll just keep doing that. And then you wind up, you know, just getting really angry. Right. Yeah. You know, like I remember again, like the, one of the times that stands out to me is one of the times when I was most angry in my life is when I was really frustrated in my career uh, in orchestra administration I was wanting to do other things in my life, but I didn't know how, and I felt trapped and I felt insecure about all these things. And I was just like, Oh, like I want something to change, but I don't know how to change it. Right. So that kind of built up in me. And I remember just feeling a lot of indiscriminate anger about mm -hmm. things and, and then, and then it would come out and then something would change. And, and so it's almost like, it dupes you into thinking that that's mm -hmm. the only way to make change. You right. have to get mad about it in order this to make This happens change. in relationships too, Absolutely. all the time. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's some of the ways that you've seen that in relationships? Um, just it's easy to blame, I think, one another. And you have sometimes uh, relationships, people will rely on anger to actually get into the conversation of what's really happening. Right. Right, it blows up and then there's a release and then they talk and they make up or not. But I think, you know, we want to master that communication, be able to have open conversations before the frustration, the anger is set in. Yeah. Or at the very least, when it's just in the stage of frustration, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, you know, I'm like, I'm really, mm -hmm. it, it, it's when we're watching uh, on the watch list, right? Uh, if you've listened to our previous episodes that, you know, we talk about the watch list. Well, one of the ones that we uh, binged on over the summer was rain. Oh yeah. And I remember sitting next to you and I'm like, man, if they could just talk about this more openly and you're like, it's a show, you <laughs> it's know, a show. what are you thinking? It's like 16th century. Yeah. It was a really fun, mm -hmm. really fun show to watch, yeah. but people didn't, they didn't communicate, you know, like yeah. they didn't communicate what, what was really going on inside of them and what they were worried about and all these things. Like they're so busy, like hiding that stuff and trying to trying to manipulate mm -hmm. the situation in some other way and it's not working out. And then they're frustrated and angry with one another. And then it finally comes out, you know? Yeah. Finally, the real thing. I mean, that's one way to do it. That's I don't want to make it wrong. Yeah, but yeah. you're right. It's, it's exhausting. So next episode, we'll get a little bit more into the, how to solve some of this. Yeah. The, the most important thing is to consider for yourself that it just might be possible to get what you want without anger. That's a great place to start. That's fabulous. You start there. Just might be possible. And, and, and the first piece is to really examine what's going on. Like what is, mm -hmm. what is not being fulfilled inside of you mm -hmm. that you're getting angry about? Right. If you can put, I'm not even saying you have to get exact with it, but if you can just put a little bit narrower focus on that to see like, right. oh man, like I, and, and really accept and own for yourself that you are, you're feeling unfulfilled or unsafe or whatever you're feeling around that, mm -hmm. that, that is causing you to feel anger rather than projecting it out and building a case for why you're supposed to be angry at someone right. or at the world. You're going to be, you're going to be like light years beyond. Right. And you're going to, and you're going to be able to start to take control of it before it takes control of you. Okay. And then you throw on top of that, that simple question, hey, it just might, you know, I wonder if it's possible for me to get what I want without anger. Love it. All right, everyone, you heard it here on Illumination Podcast with Nick and Kizma, the Anger Games. We're going to be back with part two next week. So tune in, uh, subscribe, share, rate, do all that fun podcasty stuff so we can get in front of more people and we definitely appreciate you. Share it with an angry bunny, but do it anonymously. <laughs> All right, gang. 
Uh, we'll see you soon. Much love. Hey, thanks for jamming with us today. And if you enjoy Illumination Podcast, please go ahead and share it with someone you love. Give us a rating, review, download our podcast. And remember, you can find us at illuminationacademy.net forward slash podcasts. Talk to you soon. Namaste.